Hi guys, welcome to Simply Scuba. So if you're looking to buy a new pair of fins, as you'll notice, there are so many different styles and, and uh, sort of colors and sizes out there, but which is the right pair of fins for you? So this video is really to make your life a little bit easier so that you can make the right decision. Okay, so when you boil it down, there are really three types of fins out there. You get snorkeling fins, you get scuba diving fins, and then free diving fins. So snorkeling fins are typically a full foot fin. Um, so as you'll see, all of your foots can fit into this, which we call a foot pocket. Uh, these are really made to be worn barefoot, so you don't wear any kind of boots with these. Uh, you can put neoprene socks or even just traditional socks. Um, a traditional pair of like trainer socks can help with rubbing sometimes, uh, especially if they're a little bit too big for you. Um, they can sort of pad it out. If the water is a little bit colder, you can wear a neoprene sock, but really they are designed to be worn barefoot. They're typically a lot lighter um, and, um, and they're fantastic for travel because of that. Um, as soon as you move up into scuba diving, you're using a lot more energy, um, you're pushing yourself and a lot more equipment through the water, so you need a more robust fin. So these ones tend to be a little bit daintier um, for snorkeling and kind of paddling around on the surface, which makes them nice and light and fantastic. They tend to be a lot smaller and more compact as well, um, but the real difference is that full foot pocket. Um, so you wear it barefoot. When you start to move on to scuba diving, uh, as I mentioned, you're using sort of more energy, you're moving more equipment through the water, you're fully submerged through the water as well, so you need something a bit more robust, and that's where open heel fins come in. So open heel fins, they have a, a section where your foot goes in, but only the front section of your foot. Your heel stays out of the back, and then you have an adjustable heel strap that just goes over the back of your heel and keeps your foot and your boot inside of there. The reason why we wear a boot is typically because we're submerged in the water for that much longer, so you need the thermal sort of protection. Um, as well as a lot of boots, they also have um, that sort of rigidity underneath the bottom of your foot on your sole, um, and that helps transfer the energy and you don't get cramped as much. The third type of fin is purely for free diving. Uh, so as you can see, these are massive. These are designed for, free diving is basically snorkeling, but to extremes. So you're either going down for really long times or you're going down for sort of maximum depth. And the way these works, they're still a, uh, a full foot fin, but because the blade of the fin is that much longer, it transfers the energy through to the water that much more effectively. So you're not using quite as much energy. Um, they don't require so much energy from your legs, um, so you can glide through the water, but they are quite cumbersome. So they're great in sort of open blue water, but um, you can use them while scuba diving. I've used them while scuba diving, um, but if you're sort of swimming in a group, then they tend to get in the way. You end up sort of kicking people. If you're trying to swim through a wreck, they're definitely very clumsy. So for straight line speed, they're fantastic. And for energy uh, sort of conservation, they're very, very effective. Okay, so after the sort of overall style of the fin, uh, one major point that I start to look at is the heel straps. And this is just for the scuba diving fins. You can get some snorkeling fins that have uh, sort of open heels. Uh, with an adjustable strap that makes it much easier to, uh, to sort of fit them to lots of different people or just to fit to yourself um, because full foot fins tend to be quite limited in their range of sizes you can normally fit one maybe two sizes of uh, sort of foot in the fin uh, but with an adjustable heel strap you can really adjust it to um, to your exact foot size um, but for looking at heel straps there are lots of different styles so this is very much the traditional style uh, we call this a ratchet style so you have a one-way ratchet strap um, that you can tighten you've got two little tabs uh, one on either side and then you push on the button uh, to lengthen it off and you have to do that at the beginning and the end of every dive you can disconnect them with the little pinch clip but um, that's very much the traditional, very simple, but uh, it can be a little bit, uh, bit awkward, especially if you're wearing a heavy cylinder, or you're on a boat that's kind of moving around, you're trying to put your fins on it. It's, it's not the easiest to reach down to your ankles and pull on a pair of straps. So the manufacturers came up with a few different alternatives. The first one was a bungee heel strap. So uh, this one, for example, this section is a bungee, so that's very stretchy. 
and, uh, and that just means that it automatically sort of tucks in onto the back of your heel. Uh, even as your wetsuit boot starts to compress at depth, it's still kind of pulling in, so it keeps your fin on. Whereas the ratchet straps, a lot of those, if you're diving and you go down deep, um, your wetsuit boots, all the tiny little bubbles inside the neoprene actually shrink down because of the pressure. That means that you have to re-tighten those straps, whereas these ones tighten themselves. This is just made out of a, um, the same material that they made their spear gun um, slings with. So it's made to be stretched over and over again. Uh, it's very tough, it's very robust, and it's very quick and easy to put on all by yourself. Um, you just pull this, uh, this big loop up over your heel, let go, and that sort of holds it in position. So they're getting very, very popular. So um, there are a few different alternates uh, sort of coming out. The first one is the spring heel strap. Similar concept, except you have a metal spring, um, still stretchy and that still sort of uh, adjusts for compression at depth, except instead of a, uh, a sort of rubber or silicone um, sort of sling, now we have a big rubber spring, uh, a big metal spring, I should say, sorry, uh, and that's gonna help sort of attach that onto your foot. And the third style is a um, more of a bungee heel style. Uh, so again, you've got um, that sort of elasticated bungee. It's wrapped up in a uh, sort of a cord um, sort of sheath. Uh, similar concept as the uh, as the silicone slings, but in a slightly different uh, sort of direction. Um, so they're definitely very, very popular. Uh, more and more fins are coming with those as standards. Um, the last type is just for the snorkeling fins, very, very simple. Uh, we've got three different adjustments, so you can sort of take that off and then tighten it up and then put it so it's that little much uh, sort of tighter. And you've got all of those adjustments on each side of the fin, so you've got sort of five different lengths of, uh, of heel strap. So they're the most basic, and then the most popular nowadays are definitely the bungee or the spring heel strap. Okay, so we've looked at the foot pocket and we've looked at the heel strap, but now the main section of the fin is the blade. So the blade is the bit that's actually increasing the size of your foot and actually moving you through the water. So a lot of technology and a lot of design goes into that. Uh, the first bit is, um, is typically the angle. So you'll see a lot of fins actually have a downward angle for the blade from the foot pocket. And this just means that basically when you point, if you try and do it now, if you try and point your foot out uh, with a sort of stretched leg, it won't go exactly straight. Your foot always has that little bit of an angle and this just compensates for that. Uh, so it makes it more efficient whilst you're in the water. But starting off, this is what I would call a paddle style fin. Um, so it's just a very simple flat, uh, sort of paddle, a bit like a paddle on a, uh, on a boat, um, and it literally just forces the water out of the way. Um, so the designs have changed, the materials have changed over the years. Um, so this one has a little bit of channeling in that you have different types of material. So you have a more rigid material that acts sort of down the center and down each rib on either side, so that keeps the shape of the fin but then softer material running down allows the blade to change shape as you sort of move through the water during each part of the kick, and that way it acts more as a scoop, um, trapping more water and being more effective. Then on from that, they started to notice that the area just in front of the foot pocket is a bit of a dead zone, so it actually creates a lot of drag during each part of the fin kick. So then vented fins came out. As you can see, just in front of the, um, the foot pocket, there's a vent that just goes straight through the fin through to the other side. This eliminates the problem of that dead zone. It actually increases the efficiency because it directs the water down away from your foot. Um, these are typically preferred by more technical divers um, because they tend to be a lot shorter. Um, they're usually made out of a single piece of rubber or neoprene, uh, monoprene, sorry. Um, just a single piece of tough material. Uh, <coughs> they're very reliable, they're very tough. And um, 
and they have these ridges running all the way down. So the ridges increase the rigidity of the fin and they also act to channel the water down in a straight line. Instead of going around the edges or off the sides, it all gets channeled all the way down to the tip of the fin and that sort of moves it through. The reason why they prefer by technical divers is that it doesn't matter what um, sort of fin kick style you use, they're very tough and reliable and they tend to be a little bit shorter as well. So if you're diving in caves or in overheads, um, like, a, uh, like a wreck or whatever, they, um, they don't get in the way and they don't sort of get, they don't kick things basically, they're, they're, they're nice and compact. So then on from that we get, uh, I was mentioning it earlier, where you have dual materials. So this is what I call a channel fin. So this, we have these streams of softer material that break up the blade of the fin and they change the shape of it so it creates that scoop. You've still got these big rails down either side. So these are taking all the energy from your foot. They're transferring it all the way down the side of the fins, all the way down to the tip. So it keeps the rigidity of the fin whilst allowing that sort of perfect angle of attack, changing the shape of the fin so it creates more of a scoop and that moves you through the water. Uh, then on we move to, we started to look at nature. Um, and seeing how marine animals move through the water because they've had thousands of years of evolution to learn and uh, sort of be most effective. So, um, so what we looked at was uh, uh, marine mammals and a lot of seals have a two-part fin. And, uh, and this is what we call a split fin. So these have two, they call them leaves, um, so two parts and there's a split all the way down the center and um, what they discovered is that this is actually very, very effective and efficient at transferring energy through the water. Um, the way it works is during the, um, the fin kick, these blades turn the water and they create a vortex that, uh, that pushes you through the water. So these are fantastic for people with sort of lower leg or knee problems because they don't use a great deal of energy. Um, as you kind of kick through the water, they feel very um, sort of loose and floppy, but you really do shift through the water. They're very, very effective and they don't require a lot of energy. The only place where they tend to fall down is that you can only do a certain number of fin kicks. You can't do a frog kick um, because the leaves, ju they just, they twist and they turn and they don't work properly. But a traditional scissor kick, very, very effective and uh, very efficient at moving you through the water. And then with modern technology and modern design, uh, we come up with a, um, a sort of a hinged fin. So, uh, so this is the Sea Wing Nova. You can see we have a separation between the blade and the foot pocket. Uh, and in the middle is a hinge. So the hinge allows for a, um, uh, a very accurate um, angle of attack. So again, back to that angling of the blade, you have to get the perfect angle to transfer the most effective amount of energy from the foot pocket down towards the blade of the fin, and this does it perfectly. By allowing the lower section of the blade to actually twist and, uh, and turn to the perfect sort of 45 degree angle, it's very, very efficient. And then on the opposite side during the downwards kick, it's a bit more rigid. So again, it gets that perfect angle of attack. So it's the best of both worlds. You still have the channeling, you still have those kind of ridges going all the way down. Um, again, much like the, uh, the split fin, they do feel very floppy when you're in the water, but they're very, very effective at moving you through the water. So you're not using quite as much energy, um, but you do really move through the water effectively. So that was a quick look at the different types and different styles of fins that are out there on the market today. But let us know in the comments below which type of fins that you use and why. Thanks for watching and safe diving. We are an online dive store serving the UK and the world for all your diving equipment needs. So why not visit us at simplyscuba.com or click the box on your screen.